Okay, so tonight I'm going to do a DIY tutorial on making homemade candles using wax. Um, in particular, this is the Scentsy Bars. Um, I no longer use Scentsy products anymore. Um, chosen to go another route and I really like candles, so I figured rather than throwing them all away, I would turn them into homemade candles. This will work with any type of wax bar product that you use. Um, I know Hobby Lobby has their own version. You can get some from Target, Michaels, Walmart. Um, I'm sure there's a whole other list of stores that carry their own version of wax bars. Don't think it matters as long as it wa it's wax and as long as it melts. Um, so what you're gonna obviously need a couple products. You're gonna need your wax bars. You are going to need a glass canister. Any type of glass canister will work. I happened to go to Hobby Lobby today and they were all on sale for half off. So I went a little crazy and got a whole bunch and all different colors to go with the color and theme of my house. Um, but again, any will work. Just make sure they're glass. Obviously, they're going to be at a high um, burning temp, so you don't want them to crack or melt or break. Um, and then you're also going to need wicks. Depending on the size of your glass canister, um, it's also going to depend be dependent on the size of wick you use. They have, um, I guess, what would be considered short wicks and long wicks. I got short wicks today. Um, they're, I guess, they're three three and a half inches in length. Um, since my glass canisters aren't that big, you guys can see them, I know the lighting's kind of crazy. Um, the wicks are a little long, so this is obviously one I pre-made earlier to make sure everything worked. Um, I'm going to have to trim them a little bit before I actually light the candle. That way it's not, you know, just burning and filling the air with carcinogens. Um, but if you happen to have a larger vase or a larger glass canister and you happen to have a lot of wax and you just want to combine them all together, you're obviously going to get, want to get a longer wick. Um, and again, I found those at Hobby Lobby for $2.80. $2 dollars 80 and with 40% off, so it came up to like a dollar or something. Um, not that expensive. You can probably find them at any craft store. You're also going to need um, some type of cutting board. I'm just using just a little flimsy plastic one and then some type of knife, um, whether it's a utility knife, just a plastic knife my daughter is letting me use, or a um, stainless steel knife. Just It doesn't matter. Um, you're going to need this to trim down your blocks if they don't fit into the mold, your glass mold. Um, some of them may, some of the bigger chunks might not, so you want to cut them down and kind of just cram them in there. Um, so obviously once you've found your jar, you've picked which scents you want to go in which jar. Um, I've mixed a couple of my scents together because I've noticed they make a really beautiful scent. Um, if you mix a couple together, you can have them all separate, put them all together and do a hodgepodge and layer them and have... Um, a different scent as the candle burns as the days go. I chose to do one scent per glass canister because again, I bought too many. Um, then you are going to want to hot glue your wick to the bottom of your glass canister. You can simply do this by using a hot glue gun and just applying a little bit of glue to the little metal portion that the wick is attached to. Um, and once that's nice and hot and you got a little bit of bead of glue, you immediately stick that inside the glass canister on the bottom. Um, give it a little press on both sides so the metal portion of the wick bottom does go on semi-evenly. Um, this should dry within just a few seconds. I happen to let mine sit for a little longer than that as I had other things to do. So once the wick is then in your jar, your Scentsy bar is chosen, you can start placing your Scentsy into your candle. Um, this one's kind of bigger than most of my other openings of my jar, so you're gonna find that this one's probably pretty easy. So, tilt the camera down so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, open this bad guy up. I've obviously used a couple, it's a good flavor. So just kind of break them apart, super easy. 
Go ahead and put them in your glass jar. It's kind of like a little game of Tetris. Get them in there however they can fit. So I was able to get four in there nice and good. My fifth one is not going to fit. So that's where the knife and the cutting board will come into place. So I'll just cut this into little smaller sizes and kind of wedge it around any open area that I see needs wax. And then obviously take the little pieces that are going to come off because I don't like to be wasteful. And then just kind of shake the rest in there. And while I was doing this, I should have had a pot of water going. Um, so I've got just a, um, a grilling pan, just one that I use for cooking. I've got it probably about two inches full of water. I have not started boiling it yet. Um, I probably should have done that prior to starting this. Um, but I actually think it might be better if you do all of your candles all at once and then put them in the water. So it's probably going to be about three quarters, um, three quarters of an inch way up with water. Um, just enough so obviously when the water starts boiling, it melts, starts to heat up the wax and it starts to melt the wax because you want the wax to melt into a nice little candle mold just like this. Uh, I don't know how evenly it would, the wax would melt if you were to just put it in the glass container and then light your wick. Um, I think it just looks cooler and more like a candle if you do it this way, but you know, hey, I don't know. Leave it in the comments below if you could do it this way and see how it turns out. We'll see which one works better. So obviously I'm going to break up all my Scentsy bars, my wax bars, and put them in the glass containers. And then I'm going to put as many glass containers that will fit in my pan and boil them at one time. Um, that way I just do a big batch and I'm not having to do them singularly. Um, and you'll know that you are done boiling and that your candle is ready once all of the wax is melted and there are no chunks left. So then you can pull it out of the water um, using tongs and an oven mitt. Um, it's going to be very hot. The glass is going to be very hot. So don't say I didn't warn you. Um, and then just set them aside and let them cool for about an hour. It's wax. So it'll probably actually cool and harden in less time. Um, and then you're ready to use. You can use these as gifts. You can use them for yourself. I personally am going to be sticking one in every room and lighting them every night because I'm crazy and I love candles. So I am going to start breaking up my wax bars into all of my glass containers. I'm going to boil some and then I will show you the end product when I come back. So go ahead and get started with what information I've given you so far and we will meet again once our candles are almost made. Until then, au revoir. Okay, so I managed to get all of my wax into all of my vases or my candle holders and into my pot. So I am now going to turn on the heat or the, the heat, the stove, the gas, and I'm going to put it on about medium high heat, um, bring it up to a boil and let these puppies start melting. Um, one thing I did forget to tell you in the earlier clip was when you are putting the wax into the jars, um, some of them might get a little crazy and your wicks might kind of go like, here's a good example of one. And I'm really OCD. Um, I had to let it go. <laughs> your wick kind of might get a little off base and not be centered. Um, but once your wax starts melting within the container, you can actually kind of move your wick around. So it's not the end of the world if your wick is on the, the side of your the side of your candle and you've got wax all around it. It's going to melt, it will move, and then obviously once it hardens, um, that's when your wick's going to set into place. So no worries. So we've got this puppy burning. Um, I've got my towel out. Um, so when they are done cooking and they're all melted, I can pull them out of their water bath again. 
with some tongs and with some oven mitts because it's going to be hot. Don't say I didn't warn you. Um, and then we will come back. So our water is already starting to bubble. Um, yeah, so excited. It smells so good. We will come back in a hot minute when everything is starting to melt and I'm pulling them out of their baths and I can show you what the end result will look like. So again, if your wick is a little off base because of the amount of wax you put into your container, you can move it around once your wax starts melting. And I already see some of my wax melting. So we're on a good even slope. All right. I'll see you soon. Bye. All right, so now that everything has come to a boil and has completely melted in each of your glass canisters, you can go ahead and turn the heat off on your burner and go ahead again, put your oven mitt on because it's going to be hot, get your tongs, and one by one, slowly grab them with a nice sturdy hand out of the hot water and place them on your awaiting towel. You want to do this in a quick manner because the wax will start to cool off very quickly, but you can also move your wick if it has not settled in the middle of your glass container. So again, if you're OCD like me and it's not perfect, you've got a small margin of time to make it perfect. I think this little guy cracked. Sorry. Careful with that one. So, fortunately, you do run the risk of your glass cracking. Thankfully for me, I have many glass canisters, so one casualty is not that bad. Go ahead and straighten the wicks. Some of your canisters might be okay to the touch. I just don't recommend them grabbing like that off the bat. And now you're ready to dip your Easter eggs. Ah, just kidding. Okay, so a lot of this wax is already starting to set up. Go ahead and start fidgeting with your wicks if need be. One of mine did break because I pulled too hard, so I'm gonna have to watch that guy closely as the wax starts to set in that one. That way I can have that wick just perfect. Other than that, um, they should start setting up within an hour and your candles are ready to go. And again, I already have one pre-made that I made earlier. The wick is too long, so you are gonna wanna trim down the wick um, pretty substantially. You don't want that to burn until it gets to the actual candle. It'll burn all that black stuff off and you don't want that in your house. So trim it pretty close to the actual uh, wax itself and enjoy your new candle. You're welcome.